So just a quick video to talk about the CSS attribute method, this ATTR method. This is something you can use in your CSS to actually extract values from various attributes. If you, let's say we go in here, if you add an attribute into your HTML, so there's some attributes that are built in like title, if I could write title, there we are. So these attributes exist as part of the specification or you can create your own attributes using the data hyphen prefix. So I can make any attribute I want as long as I put this in front of it and it will be considered valid HTML5. So I can take the value from inside of here, let's say Bob is the value that I'm putting inside of this attribute. I've got an attribute over here. Then I can come up here and I can actually extract that using the ATTR attribute. So if I wanted title, I would just put title inside of it like this. Now with a pseudo element like before or after, I can actually inject this content from the attribute into whatever element I'm talking about here. So paragraphs, I'm going to create a pseudo element at the very start of each paragraph and I want to fetch the title attribute and I'm going to make that the content like this. And there it is. There's Bob being injected in front of that. If you want to add a space or something after it, you can still do that. You can inside double quotes just like this or you know, if you wanted to add some more, you could do that. So raw text, even spaces. See, these ones don't have title attributes, so there's nothing in front of them. Now, we have this other attribute here, data font. We could take that. It works with these created ones as well. Now I've got the actual numbers here. Now, in the CSS3 specification, there's another thing that you can do with ATTR, which is a really cool thing. I can set... In the specification, I can come in here and I can say, you know what, I want the width of every paragraph to be whatever the value is inside of the data font attribute. And px is going to be the unit that I use for that attribute, then a comma, and then I can specify what the default value is that I want to use. So I can say, you know, auto, or I can put in... Um, 500 px whatever I want as the the default value that's an optional parameter here so I'll just make a little comment so optionally we could add auto oh sorry that's JavaScript comments here we are like that now you'll notice nothing changed here and that is because this is an official part of the CSS3 specification but currently there are no browsers that support it. So why am I making a video? Well, hopefully enough people will become aware of this and there'll be a little pressure on the companies to start adding this in. Because you could do all kinds of cool things. You could uh, do transforms. Maybe I want to do a transform. Um, I'm going to do a rotate and I'm going to use the data font value and in degrees and that's going to be the amount that each one of these things rotates is whatever this value is inside of here. So cool potential things that could be coming. Um, this is a, an official part of the CSS3 specification that you can do this but you're not going to see any of it work in the browser. Currently the only thing that the browsers support is inside of pseudo elements either before or after so I can put both of them here if we want. So before or after, we can use the content attribute to inject content. So let's put uh, this at the front and at the end. So on either side, there we are at the end. And at the beginning, we have the exact same thing being injected, which is being extracted from this property right here. Okay, so that's the CSS attribute method. Um, I hope with the content attribute that at this proves to be of some value to you at some point. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching.